Now we'll take a look at something really simple, which is our barrel that is just swinging back and forth in the wind uh, randomly. I'm going to uh, isolate this, maybe grab just something so it looks like it's actually hanging off something, and I'll isolate it so we can have a look at what's going on. So when I hit play again with the uh, forward slash, you can see it's just swinging around in the wind ever so slightly. These sort of little subtle things help bring sets to life when you animate them, instead of them just being completely you know stagnant now you know everybody wants to go ahead and start you know rigging this with bones and with skin and everything but you simply don't need to on something this simple so if we take a look let's grab the parts that are actually moving and that's these ones and you'll notice that what I have is an instanced um, you know set of modifiers across these multiple objects now the mesh select is just giving me a selection uh, up from the bottom you could use a volume select if you wanted but I have edge distance turned on just to stop the selection possibly crossing over, um, you know, into areas. So it follows the uh, uh, follows along the mesh when you have edge distance on. Played around with the fall off, just give me a little bit of a soft uh, fall off at that point there. And then a bend modifier. It's as simple as that. And so with the bend, you know, I'll just turn off the limit and what you can see is it's bending everything and it's bending the barrel too so if you wanted to doing more than that it wouldn't look too good so I'm using the limit effect and the limit effect we can limit where the bend happens now with that much weight on the end of a rope the rope would be staying straight so really the limit effect should be happening probably just the very top up there and just sort of bending around at the top and it's hanging in a straight line on the end of the rope. So that looks, you know, pretty good. It's, it's you, know, uh, you know, allowing us to bend it. But we want to have that happen as automatically as possible. I'm just going to open up the uh, mini curve editor here. I'm going to scroll down and uh, find the bend modifier here. And we'll take a look at what's being uh, driven. So the first one is just the angle. And you know, one of the things I like showing uh, when I'm doing work like this is what controller is on here. So if we go into the filters and turn on controller types, it'll now show us what kind of controllers are have been applied to these uh, different uh, parameters. So that's handy to be able to see. So the waveform float, I'll double click on it. I've just gone with a pretty basic, you know, sort of sine curve. Um, so it's it's oscillating back and forth. Now that's going to change the angle directly back and forth. And you can see that I have it kind of swinging in, you know, sort of circles here to again, break it up, make it look a little more natural. And that's just being handled by the direction. So I'm changing this direction value just with a couple of keys. I mean, you could probably come up with other ways that are completely procedural, but I've got two keys just giving me kind of a speed, but I want it to continue moving on forever. And if I happen to increase the length of my animation, I don't want to have to come back and change that end uh, key and then figure out what the value has to be at that point. So I've just done it over a handful of frames here. It looks like about 181 or something at this point. And you can see that the value continues changing. Well, if we go into the uh, tracks here and have a look at what we can do with it, if we go to controller, out of range curves, what are out of range curves allows us to be able to do is set how it's going to continue. Now I'll just pull this back and zoom it back so you can see it better. And I'll reopen that. And so you can choose different types. In this case, I've gone linear on the way in and linear on the way out. You know, you could say constant and say OK, and it would be what the normal is. So it is, you know, out of range curve coming in, but normal on the way out and it stops. So it no longer is sort of swirling around in circles in this, this case. Back to the out of range curves. And, you know, you can cycle it, you can loop it back and forth, ping pong it, however you want to do it. But I just want it linear. I just want it to continue going on. Now, you could also work in some other value changes with this and get it to sort of oscillate and change a little bit. And there's kind of a cool way of going about doing that. I'm just going to right click, assign controller. I'm going to go in and add a float list and it adds a list to it. So one of them is controlling this, the sort of overall value. I could also go in now and say, uh, you know, another waveform float. 
and put that waveform float in here. If we look at the total, you can see that what's happening is it's going up with the uh, linear and it's adding on this waveform float, which I could then, you know, go in and change the period up, you know, so maybe it's just sort of, you know, allowing it to kind of change a little bit and we get a little more, you know, randomization or at least the feeling of randomization that it's kind of swinging back and forth. And there's other forces at play here with the wind swirling around and moving it back and forth. So that's really nice. It's just layering up some controllers to get it to do something a little random. And again, because it goes on forever and, you know, it's continuing on forever, I can change the animation timeline and my barrel just keeps moving.